If you're looking for a job, then you're in the right place. And if you want to grow in your career and thrive, then we have an awesome story for you. We have a great guest who's going to tell how they got internships, full-time jobs, and have grown in management leadership in the tech world here in America. Check it out. Hey friends, welcome to Chai and Coaching. I'm Rob. We've guided thousands of people in their job search, career growth, and this video we're going to go a deep dive learning about how to get internships and job because Chai and Coaching want to help you guys succeed as an international professional student, especially in your job search and your career. We have an amazing guest who's going to talk about her job search and career to help you guys land those jobs that you really want here in America. Aisha, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Aisha Janvika from Bangalore. Um, I did my undergrad in um, electronics and communication. I uh, pursued my MBA after my engineering in marketing and international business. Started working for Acer after my MBA, but I was very keen to study further. So applied for masters in Chicago. I got admission in Chicago IIT, um, did my master's in information technology and management, which is also called MIS. After completing my master's, I got a job at Covius, which is in San Diego. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Quite the span of education and career. I'm excited to learn more and we're going to jump right in. So mm -hmm. I should tell us, how did you get your internship uh, as a master's student here in America? And what was most helpful in your internship job search process as a master's student? After I completed my first year of my master's, I did get a job opportunity through LinkedIn. I was being reached out by the recruiter directly, but other way of uh, applying for internship is keep looking at a company website, um, keep your LinkedIn up to date so that the recruiters can reach out to you directly. But for me, I'm, I'm happy that I got an opportunity without applying for it. As I said, when you have your LinkedIn profile, really up to date, people will directly reach out to you based on your profile. Uh, it was a six months internship, but then after six months, I got extended for additional uh, six months. So it was one year internship over there. I love it. Yeah, this is a great example of, you know, jobs just don't come from applying online, but having mm -hmm. an optimized LinkedIn profile okay. and then actually jobs come to you. So actually mm -hmm. tell us, what did it look like for them to reach out to you? And then, you know, where did you jump into that process? You know, was mm -hmm. there interviews, you know, did you have to apply or kind of, you know, where did you start in that in that process for the job? As I said, over the LinkedIn, you have an option where you can check in saying you're open for jobs. So in that way, recruiters get notified when people are mm. looking for opportunities, right? I was being reached out by the company directly. Um, I had three rounds of interviews where they check your aptitude, your technical skills, and also how well can you gel up with the team, right? So our best cultural fit. That's fantastic. I love it. And then you yeah, obviously that got extended. Let's talk about your full-time job search. And what did you do to get that job after graduation? And what helped you the most for getting that job that you currently have now? After my third semester of my master's, I started applying for jobs. I made sure my LinkedIn is up to date, my uh, resume is up to date. And um, I believe I applied for more than 30 to 35 jobs and I got interviews for almost 10 to 15 companies and got offers from two to three companies. Interview process are not that easy, but that's how it is. You need to apply for many companies and then you get interview calls for very um, few companies out of those number of applications you put in. And it seemed like you were focusing certain size companies and certain job mm -hmm. roles with specific mm -hmm. skill sets, right? Right, absolutely. So I, I was very clear what I wanted to do. Uh, since my internship was in QA, I was focusing more into that domain, getting into test automation engineering. I was not very, very particular about fan companies. I was all okay working for small to medium scale companies too. So I landed up with a company called Covius, which is a mid-scale company. And um, for sure, got to learn a lot and been growing a lot from the time I joined. Yeah, I love your example mm -hmm. because I think you are very strategic, very focused. And the more you niche down mm -hmm. in your resume and where you're applying, you have a better mm -hmm. ROI. Instead of filling yep. out hundreds and thousands, you fill right. out a very few specific applications and got great mm -hmm. results with interviews and offers. And I think this is a great lesson that people can learn from. So how did that course, Information Technology and Management, prepare you for roles as being an analyst and an engineer? I took courses like database management, uh, big data, um, language, programming language, and some business related courses too. So in that way, I, I knew I wanted to get into a job role, which 
has opportunity where I can uh, put in both my technical skills and uh, business related skills. So QA, uh, test automation in India was something that had that kind of balance. Anything else from your degree program or college experience that really helped you for your uh, your professional job role for full time? Yes, for sure. I think my internship really helped me. Uh, Pursuing my internship in QA was very important for me because it it gave me more clarity on if that is my career path. I think along with your courses, the kind of projects you do, make sure that you um, do more projects because that gives you a better idea of what you want to pursue and. Uh, for me, I think my internship really helped me because once I got into um, my internship program, I was a QA analyst. I had a better understanding what my career path should look like, and that grew my interest towards QA as well. I love it. That's great. Mm -hmm. Did you know that getting admitted into a top university isn't the only hard thing about going abroad? There's so much more that you have to do. Figuring out tuition loans, housing, Forex, and more is going to stress you out. But what if everything that you needed to do was just in one place? Cheers to a new online resource dashboard powered by Foreign Admits, which has everything you need to do to easily study abroad. Try the Loan Widget, which is like a magic wand letting you compare loan offers from over 15 banks in real time, saving you precious time and effort. With just a few clicks, you can see interest rates, loan terms, and other important details right on your screen and even send your application from within the platform. The best part is that it only takes two minutes for the loan widget to determine if your loan application would be approved or not from fantastic banks like Prodigy, HDFC Cordilla, Axis, ICICI, and many more. Save more time by utilizing other services like student housing, Forex transfer, bank accounts, SIM cards, credit cards, travel and health insurance, plus more. Check out the links above and in the video description to apply and get help today. I hope you can take advantage of this all-in-one study abroad resource platform to make your journey even more successful. Now, a lot of people just think job search is all about getting the job, but then, you know, your career is so much more. And mm -hmm. I think you need to think about, all right, how do I grow in my career? So how can people grow as leaders, especially for management positions? And what makes somebody a good leader, especially in companies here in America? For sure, I think um, what helped me is along with my responsibilities, I used to also take initiatives to lead a team, lead a project. So I feel that kind of helped me a lot where my boss, um, they knew I could take up more responsibilities. So um, I would say, do not hesitate, do not limit yourself to just doing what you've been assigned to do. Take up more tasks, ask for more work, um, do ask for other things that you're interested. If you are interested to be a, get into management role, I think that's something you should be open about and talk to your manager and say, I'm interested in doing that. Can you give me some responsibilities that I can do? So in that way, it's easier when you showcase your responsibilities than just requesting for a promotion. That's great. My friends, if you're learning a lot like me and getting value from this story, hit that like button to say thanks to Aisha for sharing her story from her career. And our chai question for you guys is what companies do you want to work for in the U.S.? Tell us in the comments. We want to know what kind of companies uh, that what industry are you guys interested in? What kind of job roles um, in these kind of companies? Tell us in the comments. We'd love to see what's going on with our chai and coaching community. So next, I should tell us about any mistakes or kind of big lessons learned that you had in your job search or career growth here in America. America. I think uh, lessons learned is um, I'm happy that I was able to keep my LinkedIn up to date, making sure that I was applying for the right companies. You, know, you should be clear what you want to pursue or what your career growth like. So uh, make sure that you have a clear idea what you want to pursue. I also would give you uh, advice saying if you want to um, keep changing from jump from one company to another, I would say keep giving interviews even if you're not actively looking to change and um, keep yourself up to date with technology. I feel that will help you a lot. Now, what would be some specific advice you would give to people who are aspiring to be engineers and testers? I would say stay focused, be an SME in areas that you want to pursue. I would just say one thing, trust and verify if you want to be QA because that's what we do. Though we trust the developers, we also have to verify the work. So. What are the ways people can practice that and develop those skills? You have a lot of like tutorials available on tutorial side. You have Udemy online courses, online YouTube videos um, where you can learn a lot of skills. I think um, QA is not limited to manual testing. 
focus on more of test automation as well than Python, learn Selenium. I love it. Some great tips. Yep. My friends, we've made another awesome video as well with Aisha about her study abroad journey. After doing her MBA in India, she had to do an, a master's in ITM in America at IT Chicago and the what that experience was like, her decisions, her profile. So check that out. It's going to be an amazing video as well if you're considering studying abroad. Uh, and Aisha, thanks so much uh, for talking about your career, your job search. This is going to help a lot of people. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rob. This was a lovely uh, conversation. I'm happy to be part of this. So thank you so much. Just a friendly reminder to check out our study abroad dashboard with dozens of resources to make your journey even smoother. Get your tuition loan secured, housing booked, bank account open, and much more accomplished today. Click the link in the video description to save time and money right now. My friends, be sure to come with us online, like on Instagram, LinkedIn. Make sure you subscribe to our Chime Coaching e-newsletter as well uh, to get great tips and resources and upcoming events. Uh, thanks so much for being part of the Chime Coaching community. We love having you tune in and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Okay.